All right, it is 3.30, no it's not, it's 5.30, uh, Tuesday, Feb the date change messed me all up. Uh, February 21st, Tuesday, um, the regular city council meeting for the city of International Falls. I will call to order. Our first item is to pledge allegiance to the flag. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Uh, first item would be calling it to order and uh, doing a roll call. All the members of the city council are present. The next item is to approve the agenda with any additions or deletions to the agenda. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Any discussion? Uh, please. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull E under number six off the agenda at this time. Consider, reper <coughs> consider response of Cushing County in regards to lease agreement for shared space for all. International Falls Police Department. Uh, I had some conversations with some commissioners and they'd like to get together and meet with the council first before we do this. And uh, with that being said, I did have some uh, conversation along with uh, Administrator Bergstrom with uh, Commissioner Roach on Friday. I also had um, a voicemail from Commissioner uh, Schoblum and it is the, the uh, county's intention to want to have some additional dialogue and discussion with them. It's my position though at this time to leave it on the agenda and the reason I think we need to leave it on to the agenda is we have to give them a formal response of the city council by tomorrow on uh, what we're going to be doing with that uh, space. I just want to make sure that I'm correct that, that tomorrow is the date. City Administrator, is that accurate? That is correct, Mayor. They okay. requested a response from that letter on by tomorrow. Okay. Any other discussion on pulling the item from the agenda? Do you want to make a motion to, to um, pull it from the agenda? Yes, so I'd like to make a motion to pull it from the agenda. Okay, we have a motion to pull it from the agenda. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor uh, Wagner to pull it from the agenda. Discussion on pulling it from the agenda. All right, we will call the question on pulling it from the agenda. Aye. Nay. Aye. No. And I'll vote no. We will leave it on the agenda. So now we have the original motion for the agenda with no additions or deletions. Any other further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. So we'll continue with the agenda as written. We'll go to the approval of the minutes. We have the minutes of February 6th, regular city council meeting. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll move. We have a uh, second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we go to the Committee of the Whole minutes of February 13th. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. We make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion from Councillor Wegner. Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next, we go to the minutes of our special committee of the whole meeting uh, regarding the recreation. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion to approve those minute, minutes. I'll, I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. No second. Second by Councillor Wegner. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 No vote yes, motion carries 5-0. Next we have uh, our uh, accounts payable, our resolution for approving transfers, payments of claims, accounts payable. 
Moving from the 401 Permanent Improvement Fund is $66,666.66. That's coming evenly. It's on the second page. It got flipped in the, in the printing. Um, that's coming from the 601 uh, water and the 603 sewer equally in $33,333.33. .33. Going to the 403 for capital outlay is $20,567.25, and that's coming from the 601 water, $14,693, and from the 603 sewer, $5,874.25, for total transfers of $85,233.91. Accounts payable and claims, City of International Falls claims $1,031,809.57. Airport Commission claims of $9,339.94. And International Falls Library Board claims of $6,363.93 for a total of $1,000,000. $47,513.44. At this time, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the resolution. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Taylor. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Holden. Discussion? Yes. Please. Uh, total transfers is 87 dollars Oh, voice record. $87,233.91. Excellent. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 No vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we'll go to audience. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to bring anything to the attention of the council? All right. There will also be an opportunity later in the meeting. First item under new business tonight is uh, Kuching Technology Initiative discussion on the broadband project for Highway 332, County Road 155. Jackie Nagel and Jim Yunt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Good Councilors. Evening. Uh, so this is part of an ongoing effort uh, coordinated through the Kuching Technology Initiative with a lot of other stakeholders to um, modernize our county and cities and uh, provide high-speed broadband access uh, throughout. And this particular proposal is for uh, the section of 155 and 332. Um, and it's a total project of uh, $192,000, something on that order of magnitude, um, with MIDCO contributing $57,000. Uh, $1,000, and uh, the rest of the funds being provided with a state border-to-border -border broadband uh, grant, and we are, we have, uh, the county has committed to providing $28,000, which is 15% of the total project costs, and we are asking that the city provide uh, $15,000 and change as well. Um, this will have a number of advantages. There's a number of properties there that are not currently served with broadband. Um, this will also complete a fiber optic loop uh, from Midco for their services such that if their fiber uh, backbone right now gets cut at any one point, service will continue. Uh, without that complete loop, one section of that, uh, what would otherwise be a loop, would be cut off until they are able to repair the damage. Um, in addition to that, it's likely to accelerate the timeline for them being able to provide uh, broadband to the currently undeveloped properties on the east side of the city, um, where this currently no residential or other development, um, and a number of businesses that are on uh, the city limit side of it, um, as well as others. Of course, on the county side, um, those include uh, the Keep Properties uh, address on County Road 155. They have that there, but there's an, currently they're relying on cellular data. They do not have broadband uh, at that access. Keep or Midco? It's or, I'm just, Manco. Uh, no, he's, he, he misspoke. On the west side of Connor, one yes. fifty-five. Sorry. Properties <laughs> own a, their terminal site. They rely on cellular data right there. Okay. Yep. They also underwent the cost to install extension line into their primary site because there was no broadband available to them there. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that That's actually clears question. up a question I had from earlier today when Jim and I were talking. So thank you. Right. Right. Um, 
in addition, there's a, an LNL constructors site uh, where they they bought that with the intention to develop that property, but decided not to at this time because they don't have broadband access. Uh, they would like to proceed. There are also several parcels uh, owned by Wagner Construction, uh, which will become buildable in about 15 years. Uh, with well, that's 15 years out is you know a decent amount of time, but nonetheless, they're unlikely to happen for development without uh, the broadband access there. Um, and those are some of the major uh, major bullet points. We did, uh, Jackie came up with a number of different proposals for how to fund this. Um, in all of them, uh, most of them we are pursuing only 40% of funding from the Border to Border Broadband Grant. The maximum is 50% that we can ask, but the odds of being approved um, go up a lot if you ask for significantly less than the full 50%. The odds of getting any money from them are higher at the 40% level. So that's part of the whole strategy of this. And so what we are asking uh, is a resolution uh, confirming the city will participate in the project, uh, uh, a commitment to provide $28,987 uh, towards the project. That's the 15% mark, um, which will be contingent upon getting the Border to Border Broadband grant as well. Um, and then a letter, a letter of support from the International Falls EDA. Um, Jackie, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's it. And this said that we were going to be speaking to Jackie, not you. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned me as well. So, anyway. so I, I have a couple of questions. So would this service loop be coming from uh, south to north or north-south? From, uh, from the top of, from... The, the question I have is we have uh, a fiber at um, the... Voyagers National Park headquarter building. Mm -hmm. And then the any project that would be moved for the city immediately, which would be the one Simis, which is right across the street, we would be able to extend that for what we understand cheaper than going in. But I think that that's a conversation I would love to have outside of a public meeting. I'm fairly certain that the service at the visitor center is not a mid -co service. Okay. It's provided by the Northeast Service Co-op, which is government only. So you will not be able to... And if I'm, if I'm correct, I could be wrong. I don't I, and, know. and that's why I think the, yep. that this is a fact-finding thing that we need to do and get, get deeper into it, because I don't want to have any misinformation as There's we move forward. Definitely fiber running through that corridor where we're planning this project, but it is for government use only. Have has, uh, anyone from KTI contacted One Simis and to see what they needed for um, for their future build there? That that's in the multimodal. I reached out to Felix today. I haven't heard anything back, but that's the project that we have uh, that's going in there. And then the other property that we have would be in the city right now would be Keeps property. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and 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 L and L. Constructors as well. Okay. Right. Um, and then those two Wagner parcels. There's other parcels in there. The one the county just purchased from friends. Right. Right. That would go when they build. That'll go on the Northeast Service Co-op fiber because it's government. Okay. Right. So, have any of the people that would be uh, potential going getting the service kicked in anything for the? Financially? Financially? Uh, no. But we do have four letters of support from Wagner Construction, from Keep uh, Properties, from Ninko Trucking, and from Kita, all supporting the project. I've, I've put out feelers to all the businesses. Those are the four that have responded so far. Okay. And when do you need to know by on, on what level of support the city would be, be involved in? The filing deadline for the, for the grant yes. is March 1st. I'm going to be in San Antonio all of next week. So it would be advantageous to be able to file that and submit the grant application prior to that. I can certainly do it while I'm out of town, okay. but I need to know sooner than later. All right, any council questions? I would move that we support the project with the financials that they're asking. For support? The, the 40% or the 28? 20 28. 15% is the average. Uh, Okay. Because whether there's businesses or people there now, one good thing to have is fiber there, right? If someone wants to develop, mm -hmm. so 
at the EDA. And, and I think that's a good point that uh, that Councillor Holden is pointing. The monies would be coming out of our EDA fund? That's what I was thinking earlier today. Okay. So we have a motion from Councillor Kaler to uh, go at the 15% and a letter of support. A second. Yes. We have a second from, uh, from Councillor Buller. Any further discussion? Question: uh, does, Is it coming from the south and up? You're saying it's coming just north of the Van Lynn Road. Okay, that's where the that's service fine. stops right okay. now. So okay. just start just north of Van Lynn Road and continue north, up 332, up 155 to Highway 11 East. But thank you. To, for further clarification, this would provide a complete fiber optic loop. So effectively, it's coming from both directions. Yeah, um, so yeah, any one point. Okay, thanks. yeah, all that is the total service. And and I guess I, though, how much is Midco? If we're so they're kicking in the other thirty percent. Yep. Okay. Excellent. All right. Any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, we'll call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries five zero. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I was expecting a fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just quite all that carried all that paper here. I think we're talking about the letters of support yeah. in case yeah. you wanted to see them. More fight. No, I, I just want to get as much information as possible. <laughs> I'd like to thank oh. Jackie for doing all the legwork to set all this yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one last question. When would we know if we get the grant or not? That was a good question. I think June. Okay. So ideally the project would happen still in twenty. Excellent. Thank you. Mayor? Yes. So in that event, if you don't get the grant for the seventy thousand, then what happens? Then we'll go back to the drawing board okay. and start over. Okay. <laughs> and then I would be back again. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Oh, thank you, thank you Jim. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, we have a letter of support for the uh, ATV-friendly uh, RV park on a parcel of donated land. Just a, writing a letter of support for the, the city of Little Fork. <coughs> Chair would entertain a motion to uh, move forward a letter of support. So moved. We have a motion by Councilor Buller. Second. Second by mm -hmm. Councilor Wagner. <clears throat> Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 No vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we have uh, two hires coming out of Human Resources. Uh, the first one would be to hire a uh, deputy city administrator. Um, the recommendation is to hire Lisa Riggs with a starting date of February 27th, 2023. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that hiring. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion? There, if I may. Please. We had a number of qualified applicants. Um, it was myself, Chief Kostic, and Sherry Stensland, Human Resource Director, who interviewed um, six candidates. One had backed out at the end of the process of before the interviews began. So we actually interviewed five. They were all very qualified. Um, for all of us, it was the majority that Lisa came out on top. So um, Lisa does great work and excited to work with her through this next step in her career path. So we have a motion in a second right now. Let's just pretend that this passes. Yes. What is the process moving forward on um, on filling her position? Sure, yeah. thank you, Mayor. That would be my next. That was going to be my next thing. Is then I would ask the re request to fill her position. That would involve a five-day posting period, as per the union contract, and then after that, um, depending on if it's signed or not, and then if something else opened up you know, go on down that line. Otherwise, if nobody signs or is qualified, then we would open it up to fill it and advertise outside to fill the uh, vacant administrative support specialist. So we'll, uh, it, after this, are we going to have to uh, 
make mo or have a vote for that process, or is that internally handled? I would appreciate if you would just add on to it to um, uh, move forward with replacing her position, process to replace her pos the current office um, administration support specialist position. Okay, we uh, we have a motion yeah. by. Uh, by Councillor Holden and a second on by Councillor Kaler. Do we have a friendly amendment to fill position after? Yes. So. Okay. So we have a motion and second. Any other discussion? Is she going to take it? Did she? She's, did you offer it to her? Yeah. Yeah. Well, where are we at here? This is awkward. <laughs> we know. We know the answer. I did say yes. So. Okay. Right. So she's not just finding out right now, right? <laughs> All right. I. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very excited yeah. for a handful of reasons. So, um, number one, you've been amazing. And we didn't even really even know each other when, when we first started. We knew each other a little bit, but you are so professional and so wonderful at what you do. And I'm very excited to see where we go as a department with you in Betty's old spot, because we've seen she's done really good stuff. So it, it, it's, it's gonna be an exciting change for the city, so thank you. We have a motion and a second. We'll call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Now we have a uh, recommendation from uh, to hire a maintenance worker, um, and that is coming out of HR as well, and that is uh, being offered to John McCain <coughs> with a hire date of March 13th, 2023. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that hire. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Wagner. Discussion? We don't even have anyone here from Public Works to, to brag him up. <laughs> but I, w I will say that uh, I've worked with John at the BFW. Um, yeah. he, he's a very good, hard-working person. I think you'll fit in very well with the with the crew down there at Public Works. So not not the John McLean from Die Hard. Here. No, yeah. different guy. Different guy. <laughs> Die Hard's a Christmas movie. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries five zero. Next, we get into some really fun stuff. Approve the contract ordinance for the lift station number fifteen. Improvements project. Come on up. Sure, Jason Fisher, city engineer. You shouldn't have to just say city engineer. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, yes, this is a uh, part of our lift station uh, rehabilitation program. Uh, this is the second one that we're bringing before you. Um, we're recommending the award of the contract to the uh, low bidder of TNT Construction of Grand Rapids. So. <coughs> yep. All right. We have a um, we have a contract ordinance uh, that has been issued. We have a low bidder. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the low bid or mm -hmm. any bid. Okay. So low bid, and that was Councillor Buller. We have a second. Second. Second by Councillor Holden, and that bid came in substantially lower than engineers' estimate, too. Correct? It did. Yes. All right. Is there is there a reason why that it's substantially lower than? I mean, it's almost half. Half. Yeah. And these no, other ones. No, we didn't have a specific reason why. I mean, the contractor, the other the other bids were right around engineers' estimate, so it just they were lower. We did check with them, make sure that they were willing to honor that bid, and they were, so. Well, and, and when I saw the bid, I had contacted the public works director, and I, I just asked him, I said, because I don't know the companies, and I said, is this a reputable company? Because we've, we've ran into that issue before where we've had a low bid, and it was a company that really couldn't can do the work that they had bid for. And uh, he says it's a reputable company, and they meet all of the, the requirements, so. Windfall for us, I guess. I think we should call them now, just to make sure. <laughs> the the company or Ted on vacation? Uh, Ted on vacation. Okay, yeah. Excellent. All right, we have a motion and a second to uh, take the low bid in the contract ordinance. Call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Jason. All right, 
Committee of the Whole recommendations. First one is approve purchasing Cyber 6 product for enhancing cybersecurity hardware from AdSec. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that purchase. I'll move. Go ahead. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Discussion? All right. I know I feel like I'm beating a dead horse on this one, and I, I'm really sorry. I am going to vote against this, but I also have reached out to the League of Minnesota Cities today, and I spoke with uh, Christian Torgelson. He, uh, he deals with cybersecurity for the League of Minnesota Cities, and we had a fantastic conversation, and he did inform me that the concerns that I have are legitimately valid. My concern isn't that this company isn't uh, going to do a great job or anything like that. My concern on, hire, on getting this piece of equipment is it doesn't necessarily fix any problems that we're having with cybersecurity in, the, or in our, our network. He sent me an email, and by weird coincidence, I see he's online tonight, which uh, I appreciate quite a bit as well. But the crux of the conversation that we had is we haven't done any of the stuff that we need to do leading up to finding out what our cybersecurity needs are. We can plug this, this, uh, this server or this piece of equipment into our network and it can watch and monitor and make sure that everything is fine. However, we haven't done any of the basis to find out if we lost uh, all of the access to permits, it's probably not a big deal. If we lost access to bill all of our water people, that's gonna be a big problem. This system that we're looking at only sees that we're, we're having a problem or people are um, able to get into our network, but it doesn't actually secure anything more so than just knowing that somebody got in. The suggestion that uh, uh, we had was to do a, um, a business impact analysis and study what services we're offering in the technology systems and support those services and come up with priorities on what is the most important data that we have to save and really start going through it. I don't have a concern so much with how much money we're spending on this product. I'm just worried that with all the products that are out there, if this is $6,000 and that's gonna save us, I just don't see it. Um, I, 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 I see you're online. Uh, Christian, would you be willing to just uh, come online and just kind of give your brief analysis of, the, of my thoughts? Because I don't know if I do so well at it. Hello, uh, Mayor and members of the International uh, Falls City Council. I appreciate you having me on board. I thought I would join your meeting by Zoom, just on the off chance you did have any questions, and uh, it's, it appears that you do. So uh, earlier today, uh, Mayor Droba uh, called, called me to ask me some basic questions about uh, cybersecurity strategy for the City of International Falls. And one of the conclusions that we discussed or, or came to was you can spend a lot of money on cybersecurity, and you may never achieve perfect security. And the reality is, is there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the cybersecurity industry. And my concern is that cities are susceptible to purchasing products thinking, hey, this is a silver bullet that's going to solve my solution. Now, I haven't had time to look into this specific product that's offered by Advisec, but I can say that there are probably more fundamental uh, exercises that you should probably attend to first um, before you go down the path of purchasing products which may or may not be necessary. Uh, my first recommendation is to conduct an analysis of the services you offer and the systems that support those services. Second, I would inventory your data to understand what you have, where it's stored, who has access to it, and how long you need to keep it for. And the third, I would inventory your hardware and software systems. It appears this tool may do may help you with some of those things, um, but um, I, I, I can't speak to the full functionality and services that are offered as part of the Cyber6 tool. Long story short, I think cybersecurity is a complex topic and it requires a fair degree of, of due diligence and effort to spend on determining what's right for your city. I would say that um, 
purchasing a single product is not going to achieve the results you're looking for. However, I'm happy to spend my time to do an analysis with you and your staff to discuss the rationale, your needs, and what would work best for you. And if the outcome of that is, hey, go along and purchase this product, that's great. I'm not. I'm vendor agnostic and happy to recommend products that you truly need. Appreciate that. So I just wanted to, again, if the council moves forward with this, I have no issue with it. I am going to vote no on, on it because I just don't feel comfortable. However, I, I understand that we need to do something. And if for whatever reason we do purchase this product, I also feel compelled that we need to start looking at this business impact analysis to find out what we have and so that we are um, moving down a road of making educated decisions based off of what our needs are. So if there's no other discussion, and, and Scott, do you want to please come forward? Council Mayor. Did, I, I, did you have a question for? Uh, I was just wondering how much of this have, have you done already? What he was talking about as far as Locating where the main, uh, main thing should be, where we should be concentrating on? Yeah, I, mean, I haven't done a, a formal analysis, uh, but I have, uh, you know, developed some plans for con business continuity and uh, backing up our data. The, the essential data is backed up uh, in at least two different ways, so that in the event of data loss or ransomware, we do have, um, you know, some security that our data is safe, you know. Um, so again, I, I you know I have in, in the last memo I think I addressed some of those questions, but mm -hmm. I mean it was my my analysis you know not done by an outside vendor that led me to recommend this product as a way to get more visibility into our network <clears throat> and not just for cybersecurity but to see let me see performance problems uh, to see what you know if I change the network you know where some issues may be so. Again, it's uh, you know it's a, it's a tool that I think would be beneficial. Um, of course, it w if we spent money for have an outside vendor do an, a complete analysis, that would be obviously gr you know a good thing to do. Uh, obviously, depending on the on the cost, um, I've had you know I do have outside vendors uh, try to get us to hire them to do analyses and. Um, you know, for varying costs, I mean, it can be exorbitant or reasonable. But mm -hmm. again, this was just a tool that I was uh, confident would improve the ability to keep out attackers and also do other network troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, if we choose to purchase the product, I, again, my issue isn't necessarily with the the three thousand dollars on the product. I'm just worried that we're buying a product that doesn't necessarily get us much better, except for we can see that there's someone had came in or whatever. I just want to make sure that we have a game plan moving forward and not just poking at holes to try to fix problems. Right, right. I mean, as far as business continuity, I mean, like, you know, I have a packet in there. Well, I shouldn't reveal too much of this, but, you know, there are, you know, many things I've done to ensure business continuity, including backups and, um, uh, how kind of a, a manual, of, like if I'm gone or I get hit by a bus, you know, people can open this and uh, get stuff up and running uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I know I'm all for it. I'd like to see more security that we have, additional. If down the road an analysis is done, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But right now I think we need to up our game on security. So okay. that's my vote. So. Did Christian say that he'd be interested in helping? Yeah, he did. That? He did yeah. say that he would That's be willing what I to. I heard. Yeah. 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 Well, Sit down. No. <clears throat> and that'd be through the League of Minnesota Cities. Yeah. So yeah. what have we got to lose? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, <laughs> concerns? All right. We have a motion and a second. I'll call the question. Aye. Aye. No. No. And I'm going to vote no as well. <clears throat> Motion fails on a 3-2 vote. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Mayor, Council. I, I, would, I would say, Todd, if you could get a hold of Christian and get working with him on some of that 
And Christian said that he, we're we're all willing to sit down and have a conversation and, and move forward with the uh, analysis. He said he's going to contact you too, then. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll send an email to City Administrator Bergstrom and your IT director to con connect and get contacted on this project moving okay. forward. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Approve uh, proposed International Voyager Snowmobile Club a trail reroute within the city limits, which includes abandoning a previous route. Route. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second by <coughs> Councillor Buller. And we've already had this conversation in uh, in committee, two committees actually. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, is just a reroute which would be running to, um, actually, why don't you come on up and just explain it. We have Joe Marchand from uh, the Snowmobile Club, International Voyager Snowmobile Club, please. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor. Yes, so we were contacted by the Cobblestone Hotel about a, right about when they finished construction, about is there a way to get snowmobile traffic from that property? And of course, that includes the existing hotels and restaurants in that little business district to the main trail. Uh, we looked at a number of solutions, and our trail administrator um, came up with a simple reroute. About a dozen years ago, law enforcement gave us permission to maintain, um, I guess it would be the right of way adjacent to 20th Street. <laughs> Uh, which we were doing from the main trail effectively to 4th uh, Avenue and then south to the Chevy store. And it basically they were on their own from that dead end back there. Um, the, the trouble now, contemporarily speaking, is apparently there have been a number of electrical transformers installed on that route along 20th Street, which makes it virtually impossible to get grooming equipment on that right away. So in essence, we've abandoned that route. There are no more signs there on the 20th Street portion of the route. There are still signs on the 4th Avenue. So the solution uh, that we're asking the city to uh, work with us on is begin maintaining a trail that is already used by locals, effectively uh, Fifth Avenue from our groomer compound on 15th Street and Fifth Avenue, south to the Army Reserve Building, um, then east uh, along 19th Avenue to Fifth Avenue, Fourth Avenue, pardon me, I may have had that backwards, Fifth to 19th to Fourth uh, along the property line of Ekman Chevy, we have met with them. They uh, will grant a trail permit for us to use their property, and then that, that traffic will then come out uh, on Crescent Avenue where snowmobiles can cross Highway 53 and then make their way south into that business district. So if, uh, if I'm correct, then that opens up the door, which would be in front of the Chocolate Moose, the, the hotels, obviously Cobblestone on the other side. The one conversation that we did have in committee uh, both times is that uh, bituminous trail that we have there. We want to make sure that we don't have snowmobiles on there, and I think part of the conversation was we would be signing that and you have said that you have no intention of grooming that, so it works out really well for both entities. Yes, for sure. So the, the wayfinding sides um, along that frontage road would be on the west side of the frontage road, which would encourage the, the snowmobiles to use that side of the road. Um, and in thinking about this, particularly uh, after our last meeting where that was brought up, Either of us, the club or the city, could put snow fence up and signs uh, making certain snowmobiles know that they're not supposed to use that trail. The hotels would cooperate with that as well, for sure. Excellent. Any other questions or concerns regarding this? And we have uh, spoke with uh, the police, we spoke with Public Works, and everyone seems to be on board that this makes the most sense, both for the city, the snowmobiles, and obviously the businesses that are affected in that district. So I would say at this point, uh, we have a motion and a second. There's no other discussion. Call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Jim. Fabulous. Thank you, everybody. I will head to the board meeting right now and give them the good news. We'll start on that trail uh, this week. Excellent. Good. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that.
All right, next we have a resolution approving a loan application for the Minnesota Public Facilities Authority for a loan from the drinking water or drinking revolving fund for improvements to the water treatment plant. The chair would entertain a motion to approve that uh, loan application. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Second. Second by Councillor Wegner. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we go to the 2023 sump pump inspection project as presented by Bolton and Mink for a citywide sump pump inspection program. Jason, you want to come up and give us how we got to this point? Sure. Um, we have done in the last couple of years uh, a couple of uh, smaller areas of town sump pump inspections and we had enough failures and enough unknowns amongst them that we feel um, as a way to attack I and I that this would be one of our best um, tools. Uh, so we're recommending that we do a citywide sump pump inspection. Um, not we the Bolton and Mink wouldn't be doing the inspection, but we'd be hiring a plumber, a licensed plumber, to come in and, and do those inspections. So uh, we'd be doing it over the next couple of years. So for the entire city, so except minus the ones that we've already done, unless they're being reinspected. I'd like to uh, talk again about you know if if the contractors aren't there to do this work, that there's no penalty to the people, the elderly people especially, in International Falls. In other words, I don't, I don't want to see, like, get it done in 60 days or whatever. That's, I mean, people are really talking about this, so. And um, I think that we got to watch the penalty end of it because there ain't many plumbers around here, just to be honest with you. The trades are down, so. Okay. But, that, I'm sorry, but I think that's up to us anyhow. What? That would be up to us anyhow, the, 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 penalty, the penalty and the time that they'd have, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like and I think we, well, when we get to that point, we'll all be a meaningful to because we want people to get it fixed, not lock their door, and not let right. us in, right? I want it. I want it to be reasonable. Yeah. And, you know, so. And please, Jason. One of the first steps would be sitting down with city staff and kind of figuring out the scope of this project and um, figuring out how to best serve the community would be part of that figuring out that scope. So. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? All right, uh, Chair would entertain a motion to move that project forward. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Council? I'm, I'm getting ahead of this game. Mine's going in next week. <laughs> <laughs> You know, with the sump pumps, I've I've been explained what it is so many times, and the public works director has sent me, I believe, a Bolton and Mink uh, video on how to know if you if you're correct. And I'm looking at pipes in my house, and I'm looking at the stuff on my floor, and I'm like, I I'm, I don't think I'm right, but I don't know, so I'm just going to go with I'm right. <laughs> So I would love for you guys to come in and inspect it, and then that, that starts the process of, like, like Councillor Holden had said, trying to get it fixed. I mean, I, I think I, I want it to be right. I just, all of our houses are the way they are. All right, uh, next, consider a response letter to Kuching County in regards to the lease for shared space for the International Falls Police Department. Um, I think that this is going to need more background information than just voting on a letter. So I'm going to try to concise and please, uh, City Administrator, if I miss something or I misspeak, please correct me immediately because I don't want it to be wrong. 
Uh, as the county has been going through the process of uh, looking for a new jail, the conversation came um, a while back. It was myself and Councillor Joe Kraus were invited to a county um, committee meeting of myself, uh, Sheriff Headland, uh, Commissioner Pavlik, Commissioner um, Skoy, and Commissioner uh, Murray. Uh, the conversation was, you know, very much in its infancy. We're looking at uh, building a new jail, new law enforcement center. We would like to know if the city is interested in, in being a, a partner in that. At that initial conversation, and count, or, uh, the city administrator also was at that meeting as well, um, the conversation was uh, if we wanted to partner in the building of the, pro the property originally, if we wanted to put capital assets into that building. We uh, kind of did a little bit of research at that time. Uh, we did get back to them that uh, we would be struggling to go in financially in building uh, a new facility with the county, but we would be more apt to uh, continue a renting relationship with the county. At that point, we had asked for um, additional information on size, scope, building, timeline, uh, and some substantial time had passed uh, in, in that we hadn't heard anything back. The, the county has been working towards this uh, new law enforcement center, jail, sheriff's department. It wasn't until middle of last summer where the conversation started coming on, are you looking at uh, continually leasing with us? And at that time, we, we asked for numbers. Uh, how much is it going to be to lease? I will be the first to say it's my personal opinion that we have not paid enough to the law enforcement center and to the county over the years. We, um, we have had a great relationship with the sheriff's office. We've had a great relationship with uh, the law enforcement center, the jail. The conversations through the summer came down to, I believe their engineer Kent Corbett's? I think he's more of a project manager, but I'm not certain of his title. Their project manager had talked to us about um, if we were interested in, in leasing, and we continued asking legitimately the same question. How much space and how much is it going to be? We never actually got the answer to that question um, at, on December 30th, uh, 2022, I received a letter from the county board, which I believe is in your packet. Um, uh, if not, it was in the committee the whole meeting last week. I apologize for that. Asking if we wanted to sign for a long-term lease or if we wanted to um, continue the lease as we have. The, the dollar amount has uh, not been set in stone, although um, I believe it's 102000 is what the county was looking at raising the rent to, which I think is a fair amount of money. Um, with that information, uh, we sat down with the, the police chief myself, the city administrator, and the police chief, and we had some frank discussions on what is gonna be best for our police department moving forward. It wasn't an easy conversation. It lasted well over an hour, hour and a half to having what, what options do we have, and the conversation moved into the city RFP slash RFQ for buildings and facilities because we know we're, we're missing space 
for our fire, our ambulance, and public works. That is a consistent issue that we have is the space of those uh, entities in our community. That RFQ is going to be a while. We don't know if it's going to be uh, a year, six months, or two years, but that just tells <coughs> us what spaces we have available. It also tells us uh, what spaces we have that could be remodeled. It also tells us what uh, land we have that could be built for police, fire, ambulance, public works. But until we get that information, we really just don't know um, no, don't know where we're going. It makes it very difficult to sign a long-term lease with the county not knowing what the city is going to be able to do in the next five, six years. That brought up uh, a tough question. What do we do now? So we tasked uh, the police chief um, to give us his recommendation if we, if we should stay with the law enforcement center long term or if he believed it would be in the best interest of his department for us to move forward in a different space. And he believes, as I do, as the city administrator uh, does, and as the, the committee of the whole did last week, it is in the best interest for the police department to uh, um, move from the law enforcement center to a new facility. So we had that, that uh, discussion at uh, the three of us, myself, the city administrator and the police chief. We brought in a larger group to have that conversation. We brought in the public works director, the fire chief, the police chief, myself, the city administrator, and we had a, a bigger discussion on facilities. We're in dire need. We sent out a uh, RFQ, the, the council had approved that a while back. We finally got it worded correctly and we have that uh, out and uh, we're waiting to hear back from qualified uh, people to help us. Then we brought it to the first official committee meeting to make a decision, which was land use and legislation. We had uh, some very good conversation at land use and legislation. That is the first time that, uh, that Bacchus has came up as a potential for us to be able to utilize their space in a temporary capacity. One of the big concerns I have and uh, Councillor Wegner had at the time is safety, uh, accessibility from our community, um, parking. How do you dispatch from the third floor of Bacchus? What are you going to do about the jail? All of those questions are good questions. And you know what? We've thought of dang near every question. There are some that may be lingering, but this is a new process, so we have to look at it as there's going to be things that we might have missed, but we're going to have to look and move forward with. So um, it passed land use and legislation. We ended up bringing uh, the conversation to the Committee of the Whole last week. The minutes are, uh, are in the packet from that meeting, so... Um, a lot of the questions that were asked at uh, land use and legislation were reiterated at, uh, at that meeting. And I think, depending on how this goes, um, there's going to be a lot of conversation and questions and concerns in the community. Um, I, I'm, I'm with them. I, I understand that. But those are questions and concerns that I'm feeling more and more comfortable with as I'm speaking to our police chief, as I'm seeing our officers in this room in support of the decision that we're making. It doesn't change that it's tough. Um, on Friday, um, as I said at the beginning of this meeting, I did have a, a very good conversation with the city administrator and our uh, Coincidentally, my uh, county commissioner, Ricky Roach, we had a really good conversation. There was information that he did not know that the city had not received. 
There was conversation of that he did not understand uh, how we came to the decision that we had. The more information we seemed to give him, the more he understood our decision, although he still disagreed with our decision, and, I, and I'm fine with that. Um, I also had spoke with the sheriff, which again, the sheriff uh, has said that he supports the city of International Falls Police Department with any decision that we make in this. His big concern is to make sure that if there is a facility, that it is a joint use facility, whether it is police, fire, and ambulance, police, fire, but utilizing a joint facility for shared space for emergency services. Um, but again, I do think that he would like to see the law enforcement center stay there. Um, it is. It has been a great relationship. None of this is any negativity on, on the sheriff, the county, the the law enforcement center, or any of the people working there. It is a decision on. Uh, identity. The police uh, department is mentally being uh, combined with the sheriff's department because we're in the same building. Uh, it's important to the police chief and myself um, and I believe members of this council for the police to have their own independent identity from the county. Um, I also have had a conversation with uh, uh, the chairman of, of uh, the county board, uh, Commissioner Schoblum. Uh, I, I know that what's going to come out of this today is there is going to be good conversation between the city and the county. That is what I've heard through uh, Commissioner Schoblum. It's also what I heard from Commissioner Roach. They'd like to have quarterly or sooner meetings with the city council to discuss projects as they move forward so that we can be on the same page as we move forward with stuff. However, today, any way you look at it, we have to come up with a decision for the county. If we make the decision today that we're gonna break our lease, we send a letter to the county and that just means that that can be the start of the conversation. Doesn't mean that it's over, but my concern is the same exact concern that was brought to me when we all met uh, the department heads. If we don't go to Bacchus now, there is no guarantee in two years that that facility will be available. There's not a lot of things that we have to do to, uh, to change that. And it meets short-term needs for the city, and this is not a forever fix for our police department. They are a great group of men and women that deserve their own space, and by their own space, I mean an emergency services center or whatever that looks like. We can't do, in my opinion, this is my opinion, we can't do a short-term lease with the county while we try to figure out what we're going to do as a city because they're still going to do what they have to do and we may not have a place to move to in two years or three years, whatever that looks like. That's the background. I, I, I know there's going to be some rousing conversation uh, both at the discussion level here tonight and at uh, in our community, but this is not a a conversation that has been taken lightly from staff. So with that being said, I'm going to, before we even put it to a motion, I'm going to open up for a conversation from the council. Well, I think the council knows how I feel. I, um, I've been with the City of International Falls for a long time, and I saw that when they had to move, from the old place over to the law enforcement center. They lost their identity. And yeah, they've had a good relationship with uh, the deputies and the sheriff and stuff, but I think uh, it should be their own identity. It really should. And uh, and so that's what I'm pushing for. I want to see that happen. So, and, and I think it's time. I mean, how many years have gone by that they haven't had their own identity? It's been a long time. 
30, 40 years. So um, I think we need to move in that direction. I, I, oh, sir, I, uh, I, it will be shorter and less animated than last time. <laughs> um, well, maybe not shorter. Well, as far as loss of identity, I think everybody in town knows the difference between the police department and the sheriff's department. They share a building. It's no different than any other places in town that do that. But I understand the uncomfortableness with it. And there are, I see there's, I'm assuming they're here in support of the move, the gentlemen here that are with them, which is fine. But I also have heard from others that are not in support of the move for whatever various reasons. And last week I said I would vote for it, but you all know I wasn't it really, I really wasn't for it. I wanted to do it to get over this whole thing. We don't have our own place. It's been a, there's a term for it in a sandbox that I won't use here that's been going on since the minute, the minute they moved over there. And I also know the sheriffs have tried over the years and that will distress on one in particular that it put on them trying to make the city of International Falls happy. And uh, that's when I saw it from, but it's that, that's how I'm looking at, at it from. So it isn't like there weren't attempts to make them feel welcome. Sometimes I think feel, feeling welcome or not is perceived. I don't know if that's necessarily the case or people not knowing that people are there. And I went and I talked to Mike on Friday. He called me in, we had a good conversation. I don't know if we talked a lot more about the job and stuff in general than after we talked about this about 10 minutes. I do not believe it's better for public safety and customer service in International Falls. I don't think you're gonna get the same type of collaboration in different places. You can say you will, but one of the former chiefs of police is one of my best friends. Uh, he's moved. Well, I can't tell you. I don't talk to him as much as I used to, being in the same place. And that's not just friends and stuff. That's exchanging information, important information. And also I told Mike that <laughs> I hope he's willing to be in back us a long time. Because if you're thinking two years, three years, well, you're right. We might not even have our RFP and all that done in two years. Then how long before we build a public safety complex? I mean, if you're willing to be in, because once you move, you move, you know. And I told him that is one of my biggest concerns. And I have nothing against Bacchus. Like I said before, where they're moving into is an excellent space, the old Northland Counseling, because I've used it personally and professionally. And that, you know, if it maybe wasn't on the third floor, I'd think better of it. And what about, there's going to be times when they're, not everybody goes to get questioned peacefully, getting drugged through in the middle of the day. There's also uh, um, daycares there at Bacchus. Is everybody going to be comfortable with that? Who goes in and out for different reasons? I know everybody wants their identity, and I can also agree with that that's important. But we got to... Everybody would like to uh, have a new building, a new space. I'm not saying it's not needed, but I don't, I come up here, I did, Ted does a lot of good work and Billy on the grounds here, I didn't see a money tree. You know, I don't, I don't know where it is. We just, we were going to apply for a loan or grant for our water plant that's going to need new refurbishing. So where are we at? Do we want clean water? Or do we want more buildings? Which, and the cost of the project for the water is eight to $12 million if we go ahead with that after all this other stuff that this grant is for. I mean, that's another big concern. And I'm afraid part of that is who's going to take the smoke? Who's going to get the, me and Mike talked about that. Also, one of my worries from him, he's going to be getting a lot of smoke about this and if we go ahead and do this we got to make sure other people know it's not just him it's the public works director thinks he, he needs new buildings and the fire chief needs new buildings and we also got to remember nothing's been said about the county the county doesn't want to make a big new jail 
Correct. They have to. They have to. And I get a lot about transparency here. We were worried about being transparent for the sewer district representation. The only reason Sheriff Hedlund knew that we're meeting in committee and it was on the docket is because I called him, told him Monday morning that we were meeting on the county lease. Where I think we're still renting from them, this is a decision that affects them. He should have been told by somebody other than me. Actually, I was a little taken aback. And as far as talking to the other commissioners, I think if we table this and wait, I don't think what's going to happen if we don't tell them our um, decision today. Uh, they call me. Well, I called Ricky after Jason called me. They just want to get, doesn't mean a good chance you're not going to change anybody's mind. But I think we owe that to them. And the term transparency that I hear a lot about here is we should give them a chance, let them talk to us. I'm, I think they'll be okay if we don't respond to them tomorrow with this, especially after I talk to them. And, when, and uh, I just think we got that time. And the public needs to know transparency, too, about what the long-term effects of this could be, which is the longer, bigger goal. Um, so, but I think, to, and they're new. We got two new commissioners on there right now. We're going to have a third, or uh, we're going to have, yeah, two more new ones. I mean, these are all new people. They might have whole, totally different views of what's going on. And I don't think it's a mistake that we got the letter at the end of December that that this came either. So I, I don't either. And uh, <laughs> and we, I mean, I think we a little bit, the way we're raking Todd over the coals over, and we're taking, his, we'll take the chief's word for it that we should move, but not his, for something that's a lot less. So I'm seeing a lot of confusion here, but I, I'm not saying right, wrong, or otherwise. Right. Okay, but that's my thoughts on it all. I'd just like to table it and have that discussion that they requested and take it from there. Okay. Thoughts over here? Yeah. Uh, I would just like to thank Chief Koscik. I think he presented this very nice. Good job. Understandable. I just have some more questions that I've thought of that we... Would you like the Chief to come up? Uh, well, I don't. I don't know if he can answer these questions. Oh, okay, great. Um, we still have some issues. Pete might be able to answer them. Actually, <clears throat> um, how much is it going to cost to house inmates? How much is it going to cost to dispatch? Where are these costs? I do not see them. I see a, we, a yeah, monthly we have, we cost. Have this, we have that answers. Okay. The the city attorney looked into those for us. Okay. And what is, is this agreeable? Is the county going to accept paying this? Or us paying this price? I can give you a quick rundown of comparable sized cities yep. who have made a similar change recently. Um, and I forwarded some of the information to the city administrator and the mayor. Um, so I've, I've been in a group of about 12 comparable sized towns, cities going through the same thing we're going through. Um, actually, really similar. We're, the, we're looking for our identity, they're leaving a shared space with the county. Um, and what I found is, when I asked him about dispatching specifically an inmate housing, and to a police chief, every one of them said that they already pay that through their county taxes. Um, that being said, I, I do believe that would be a negotiating tool for you guys, obviously, but the precedent seems to be that these cities already pay through their county taxes for these services. And to tax them twice would place undue tax on the citizens of International Falls. Um, but do we know this for a fact? Yes, Chelsea's looked into it as well. Okay. And, and, we've, and we've had those discussions. And I apologize, I would have forwarded every one of those emails. I, I did send them to the city administrator. And, and, and in, in the email that we had received, we have Chelsea online too. Yeah. Chelsea, would you like to take yeah. that question? I would also add, I'm sorry, I also add that um, the county attorney did state his opinion that once an inmate is booked into the county jail, they are their inmate, period. So once they go, to, go upstairs and they're taken into the county jail, that is their inmate, their responsibility. City attorney, are you able to answer that question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, so I did look into this, um, and I don't... I should have anticipated this question, but I didn't. But I did find the appropriate statute on it. Um, and basically, as Chief Koshik said, as soon as they become um, Coochiting County jail inmates, they are the responsibility of Coochiting County. They can charge, um, and this is kind of like down a rabbit hole, they can charge the inmates themselves should they choo choose to, like a pay-to-stay type thing. Um, but the city should not... Um, and I wouldn't anticipate that they would incur any additional cost for having to jail or house inmates. Thank you. Uh, dispatch, same thing. And like I said, the dispatching specifically <clears throat> was paid through county taxes. Um, all the cities, and, and I'm not sure, I know Administrator Bergstrom, you received the, um, the spreadsheet. Anywhere from populations of 4,000 to 7,000, this group I'm in, so very comparable to us, um, down to the amount of employees in the department making this shift to their own space did not assume any additional costs for dispatching or housing inmates. Other than the lease rent or whatever. Right, right. 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 It w it, and it was strictly a physical space rent type situation. Right. Yep. S similar to this. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, what about, um, will you need to add additional people? I don't, you know, and Pete and I did talk about this. Um, in the short term, I don't believe so. We have um, a part-time administrative assistant who currently works three days a week. We could supplement that with additional part-time help if needed. Um, I don't anticipate a need in the near future. I mean, if we got our own space, our permanent location, I would anticipate we may need a full-time administrative assistant at that point. But in the short term, I don't foresee that, and I wouldn't be asking for that. Okay. Just to, I was just yep. thinking if you had somebody at the front during yep. the day, then when if we come to see you, mm -hmm. somebody's got to be. And there is an intercom system there, I believe. And, and also, you know, again, we have to look into this, but we'd get set up with the phone tree with the city, I'm assuming, and <clears throat> they'd be able to call us and set up meetings. And we, it's something as simple as a bell, maybe, just to ring the bell to come and answer the door. Sure. Okay. Um, I guess the only other question I have is similar to Pete's is the worry is how long are we going to be there because our tax base is dwindling to build a brand new multimodal public safety mm -hmm. whatever you're talking about yeah I just don't see that happening so I mean are you going to be stuck here for well and, and like worry. I said at the committee of the whole meeting my recommendation was not for a permanent basis exactly um, yeah this uh, this is a little over my head as far as all the other stuff goes, um, and I was just telling our guys that at a certain point I have to trust all of you. Like I've told you what my recommendation is. I've told you that this space we can exist in, short term, interim, until we get a, a current you know a permanent space. But again, I'm going to just rely on all of you to telling me that this is the right time to make this move. Right. Um, so the short answer is I. I kind of just gave you my recommendations last week that, yeah. and, and I don't really know how much more input I can have on the rest of it but and, and I, I agree with the move as for your identity they're valid as questions yeah. uh, they're valid questions yeah absolutely Holden said but uh, you know we, we're beholding to the, mm -hmm. the taxpayers absolutely. of the city and we can't go and double the cost of this by doing this move mm -hmm. even if it still kind of hurts to stay there mm -hmm. um, that's my worry mm -hmm. Because we are, you know, we already raised the levy last year. You yeah. did, yep. And we don't want to have to do that for this move. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. Um, that was my my biggest worry on that. And then, if this is probably for the council, but thank you for your. Do we still have the opportunity of a lease in the new jail? And is that something you're? Interested in again, my if you're asking me my opinion, yes, I believe the best course of action for the city would be to pursue a joint facility with fire ambulance. It's a growing trend among cities our size and larger. Um, public safety buildings are kind of becoming the norm. I again, it, this is nothing to do with anything else beyond me just wanting to see our identity in our police department connect with the community more. And I, I think, granted, Pete and I had a really good conversation. We had very good points with it, but I think he and I see things the same way as far as we both want the best for the police department. We might disagree about what that means. Oh, yeah, yes. But <laughs> I have no doubt that, that Pete and I, though, at the end of the day, we just want what's best for the police yeah. department. Um, 
I did appreciate you talking to me yeah. on Friday. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I do foresee that my recommendation would be to partner with the fire ambulance. I think Adam is growing out of that space. Whether he's forced out of it at some point, that could even be a, a concern, just given the codes. You know, and, and he could be facing something similar to what they're facing with the jail. I, I don't know all the specifics of that, but I think it would be smart then rather to say, well, let's just build a new fire department to say, well, why don't we combine facilities and save costs that way? Okay. And, and just to touch on, on that little piece that you had just hit, that's, that's how we got to the RFP or RFQ, is as we're putting in hundreds of thousands of dollars into our buildings to keep them up to current code, we are, we are getting up to current code every year, everything we're doing, but at the end of the day, we still have a 100-year-old building. Um, and, and you don't have to come up, Chief, but when you had to redo the air for the ambulances and the fire in the fire hall, roughly how much was that change? Uh, we, we actually didn't do it because we didn't get funded for it, but an air handling system, uh, I believe it was three years ago, was $105,000. So $105,000 for the air system for, that we're by law supposed to have? Yep. So that that's a change that we have to update. We had, uh, and I, I can't pinpoint specifics of what Public Works had, but we had something to do with uh, oil containment thing, which was just shy of, huh? Flame trap in the drain. Flame trap in the drain, which was just shy of a quarter million dollars. So all of these buildings that we're having, we are putting tons of money in every year and we still have 100-year-old buildings. And I, I understand that uh, we have to abide by the taxpayers, but are we, in the big scheme of things, abiding by the taxpayers by nickel and diming all of our buildings when we could set a new building which we would be um, using for joint space, joint lockers, joint storage bays, you know, to be able to do everything that meets current code without continually putting more money into our old buildings. I actually had Saturday wrote a ridiculously long uh, thought about this, and that was that's that's the issue that the county's having. That's the issue that the city's having. Yeah, no, I, I did it on a computer. Um, but but that that's the same issue that the county is having. I mean, their their jail by state mandate does not meet the current codes. We are not meeting the current codes with our fire and our ambulance buildings. So this is the time for us to make a decision. Are we going to keep nickel and diming every single thing that we have to fix, and then in five years do it again because it's still a concrete building, or are we going to look at a building that meets current standards that we're going to be good for 20, 30 years? I know that that's, what the, that's what's important to me in this conversation. It's about looking at what's best for the community in the future, and I'm the last person that wants to spend any money. I, I, I know that people would not believe that, but I don't want to spend undue money, but I also want to make sure that if we are spending money, we're spending it the correct way. So, Chief. My comment's gonna be brief. Then come up, because it has to be recorded. If you would have just told me it was 103,000, you would have been fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think uh, my fear and the fear of the police chief is I think we're watching what the county is going through, being forced to make changes, whether it's advantageous or fiscally available now or not. Those changes need to be made. We don't want to get backed into the same corner. We want to be ahead of this curve. We want to do it on our terms, and we want to do it properly. I can cite, and I'm not going to, I can give you a lot of reasons why our fire station could potentially be in the same problem or areas as the jail is right now. We have not had that notification or whatever you want to call it to, mandate. Make, those mandate to make those changes, but I, I do fear that is coming down the pipe. So um, I can, again, cite those on a, at a different time, but um, 
I think there's an opportunity for the city to make meaningful changes on our terms versus being backed into a corner. I feel bad for the county being in the position they're in. Yes. Um, I have my opinions on that too, nothing against the county, just at a state level, I mean, that's a, that's a terrible place to be, but um, unfortunately that's where they're at and we want to avoid that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Please, Pete. Just that I wanted to iterate, like, whatever the way this full I will also be on board, whatever way it goes, help the transition and do the best we can. I'd like to make a couple. It might, I, I'm not sure what this statute says. I haven't looked it up. But just because you're responsible for somebody, let's say a prisoner, doesn't mean you can't charge for the cost of that until they go to court and get reprimanded to the county jail. Same with, and it isn't a good theory, yes, that, and I agree, taxpayers have already uh, paid for a lot of this, and this is not me, but I'm just saying what could be, I'm not, well, I don't think I'll go give them some price ideas, but probably not, you know, I'm just telling you this may come. Yeah. You know, that's all. I just wonder. But and that would be on you. I mean, yeah, that, a certain right, point, and that's our job. Yeah, that's, that's not your worry. Life. That's yeah. our worry. My For belief sure. is just the information I yeah. gave you. I, I don't done. believe we would be responsible. Yeah. But again, I think you've already done more in a chief's position going real estate hunting than I would expect. So thank you. Councilor oh, Buller. I guess I, I think I'd be with you on one of your opening statements is if we send this letter to them to open it up for conversation, um, they requested that we that we do respond by tomorrow, and I think we should take our take it seriously and respond by tomorrow, but then also um, be open to conversation. Be open for conversation then after that, and, and that's, that's that's a place to start anyway right now with them. That'd be, a, that'd be my recommendation. I'd like to see it, the letter go and then because we promised them we'd have it, we've got it, response, then let's talk about it later. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah. I, I just would like to see for sure that now we're not going to incur inmate cost and dispatch cost. Because and again, that would be something I, I can't. What I can right. attest to is that this, what the statute state, what the city attorney's opinion is, and what. 10 other comparably sized communities have already done. And that's the precedence I can cite. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's, it, it's definitely a bargaining tool that, that the city would have. That, that is, that is what, that's it, our it, level. Not, yeah. yeah, and that would be what I can, and I can give you, I can research more information on that and give it to you guys, but. No, that's fine. I just, those are my concerns. Yeah. Uh, that, that was what was raised from the call that I got. Yeah. Or three. From the or four or five, or five <laughs> was they're going to charge us for all that yeah. stuff about 75 80 grand a year and i think you would have a good arguing base so i mean it's, if that is the case that puts us right back to nine thousand dollars a month at no cost savings so and that's the cost of identity mm -hmm. and how do you tell our taxpayers that this is what we're doing now we're going to double bill you right right well and and to be fair <clears throat> um Again, if we're talking about making a move to the Bacchus building, um, I believe it was 6000 something. It came out to just about what we're paying now, and that was part of the recommendation. I, I too, believe it or not, watch our budget very closely. Um, you probably tell by the annual report where I listed all the savings we had, even to a few hundred dollars. I mean, I realize this is the taxpayer's money. Um, but again, I, I don't think my view on this came out of just strictly finance. That brought about the conversation, but like you said, the identity of us too, and, and a lot of these forward-thinking notions that I think are important to our department. Yeah, I agree with that. No argument here. I just want to be sure that we're not going right. to... Well, and, and the only one that knows for sure is the other parties. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's what we need to talk to. Place. Yeah. So we've had, anyone else have any discussion? If not, I will, uh, um, Chair would entertain a motion to um, send the letter that was in your packet to Kutchin County. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? 
I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Any further discussion? Um, after tonight, we're going to have uh, a lot of conversation. This is going to be in the community. It's not that at any point this wasn't transparent. It's you know been posted. We've been having the conversations at Committee of the Holes. We've met with the county at their meetings. It's been a long time coming. Um, but it's going to be in the community tomorrow. And I just... I, uh, one of the things that Councillor Taylor had said last week is any way that we move this, we're moving it as, as a team or something in that regards. We're all standing, this is a city council decision. If this passes tonight on a 3-2 vote and I were to vote against it, it's my job as the mayor to stand up and say this is the decision of the city council. It's also the decision of our uh, police chief and the men that back him. It's also a decision of our city administrator and uh, the rest of our administrative staff and the rest of our city. So the questions that start coming up, um, there's going to be a lot. When I first told my wife that this was a conversation, the first thing she said is, what if you have a call and they're all upstairs of Bacchus? And I said, well, one of the things that I've been assured is during the pandemic, our police are uh, patrolling the city and they're dispatched from their cars. So they're already out patrolling. They're going to be there faster than they would have been two years ago. So if, if my wife has questions about it, um, I'm very certain that everyone else in the community is going to have questions about it too. If, uh, if you get asked a question and you know the answer, please give them the answer. If you don't have an answer, please redirect them. Um, we, we're doing this for the residents of International Falls. This is a tough, and it's, it's not done. We're still having conversations with the county. That, that's gonna definitely be a piece of this as well. Um, but we're all going at this as a united front, and I'm, I, I stand behind uh, our police chief, our, uh, our police officers. My biggest concern in all of this is I want to make sure that they understand that this is about them. This is the hardest thing I've done as mayor. This is going to be a tough deal, and I'm fairly certain that my next three months are going to be pretty crappy uh, from people that, that don't understand how the decision was made. It's a tough one, and I'm going to be standing by the police chief and uh, all of our guys and the city council. So please, if you have anyone ask you questions, answer them or, or send them my way because I will be more than willing to answer the questions and the, the heat of the, uh, a very good decision. So, Should we just eliminate some phone calls and just give them your number right away? Yeah. Uh, trust me, it was a holiday yesterday. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. so, and I answered it like you would not like Pete would do on a normal basis. So. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second uh, to send the letter. There will be additional conversation uh, between uh, myself and uh, the chair of the county board, Jason Choblum, and uh, the city administrator. And we will be setting up some conversation between them uh, moving forward. <clears throat> I'll call the question. No. Yes. Aye. Aye. And I will vote yes as well. The motion carries four for the motion, one against the motion. Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Um, go to the reports of the administrator, the attorney, and the department heads. City administrator. Mayor, council, I have nothing additional this evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, city attorney. I do have some stuff. Um, a couple of them will require council action, um, but I'll start going through them. Um, so the first is the property at 1021 9th Street um, that was burnt back in October of last year. We got a signed agreement from the property owners allowing us to tear it down and assess the costs back on taxes. The personal property was cleared out of the home today. I don't know if they finished. They may not have finished, but um, Jared Baldwin did get two quotes for tearing the property down um, and does 
um, wanted me to address as an emergency hazardous house teardown to see about approval on it. So the two quotes were, um, the first was from Travis Thompson and um, including demolition, hauling the demo and fill of the basement. His quote was 12,700. 12, the second quote was from Steve Boyum. Um, same services, his quote was $14,540. Um, this property has been um, <laughs> not only an eyesore, but a, a true hazard. Um, since October, with having it cleared out, he did ask that I come forward and request some action from the council on first that we can go ahead and tear this down and um, if you want one of the two quotes or to see if um, the city wants to use its own to tear it down, which kind of leads into my second one, but I'll stop there for now. Okay, uh, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, tear down 1021 9th Street uh, with a which was burned it, with an emergency uh, teardown. We have two quotes. One is for 12700 and the other one is for 14540 Chair would entertain a motion to tear that down. I'll make the motion that we do the emergency teardown and use the low quote. For Travis Thompson of 12700 we have a motion by Councillor Buller. Second. We have a second by Councillor Wagner. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. First one passes. Okay, so the second one's a little more long winded. Um, Jared did give me a report of all of the different properties that need um, some sort of demolition work. Um, and basically, what it amounted to was there are six properties that went back for. Um, county tax forfeiture and then there's four in the city one of them includes the 1021 9th street so three after that um, and then there's another one that was actually already approved in 2022 that's coming down um, to, was approved to come down spring of this year so technically two new city ones that need to come down um, so i reached out to nathan heibel with the county, um, particularly about the tax forfeited properties. And he said in the past, basically what he's done is he brings a board motion um, in front of the county board, usually end of April, beginning of May, um, to see about getting those properties torn down. And the way the cost of it is kind of split is the county will pay to have all of the personal property removed. Um, and then the city would actually tear the building down. Um, because it's tax forfeited, that cost couldn't immediately be assessed against the property though. Um, all of the demolition um, waste, I guess, um, would go to the dump and the county would waive the cost of getting rid of the demolition property. So essentially the only thing on the city is the actual teardown. Um, and then he brought up that the city does receive about 24,000 a year for tax forfeited properties. Um, that need to be torn down. And if the proper, property got, does go for sale, um, the city gets 20% of the net proceeds of the sale as well to help kind of cover that. And if it's sold, the city can technically reassess um, expenses against it if it needs to. Um, I know that sounds like a really complicated process, but basically what he asked me for was some direction from the city council whether there's interest in continuing um, in that respect or if we need to figure out a whole new plan on how um, the city and county work together to get these buildings torn down um, that I don't necessarily need a, a, a motion or anything on, just some guidance. And then um, for, the, for all of these properties, whether the city is going to lean towards having the public works department tear these properties down or if we're going to continue to want to request quotes or bids. Um, your Honor. Your Honor. Honorable wow. Mayor. Your <laughs> Honorable Please. Mayor. Please. Honorable Mayor. I think before we move on to any of this, we need to have a discussion with the Public Works Director. How we else go? I felt the same way. Yeah. Yeah. That was going to be my same comment, yeah. that we need to have Public Works either go through the Public Works Committee, yeah. Director, or wherever. Yeah. But I think I, I would, be, I would discussion. be very Put comfortable sending this to yeah. Public Works to you two yeah. and having the conversation. 
the public, uh, uh, city attorney, the public works um, committee is going to take a look and then get a recommendation on how they want to proceed with those because it, it's ultimately going to be staff time and, and figure it out and we're too early to probably have to worry about that right now. No, it's not immediate. I just wanted to bring it to the council's attention so it's not like, you know, the end of April and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. Um, when is the public works meeting? And I can um, go as well to kind of... Our second Monday at 2 o'clock. <laughs> second Monday at 2. Yes. Okay. Well, time we bring something to the table, not just not just Ted. Ted all the yeah. time. Man. Don't tell Ted. Yeah, <laughs> he writes the agenda. <laughs> Other business. All right, Chelsea. Do you have anything else to add? Um, I don't think so. City administrator, am I missing anything? Not to my knowledge. Those were the two items that we had spoke about earlier. Okay, then no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Department heads, anybody have anything to bring forward? All right. You don't have any news report on, Mike? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, in your report, you have the fire rescue EMS monthly report from January. You have the police monthly report for January. Report of the mayor, council, committees, boards, and commissions. Anybody, anybody, anybody? All right, I have uh, two things. The airport is meeting, airport commission is meeting tomorrow um, with having uh, Commissioner Hell and Commissioner uh, Ricky Roach both continuing training uh, for their position. They will not be there, so it is uh, just myself, Councilor Buller, and uh, Ryan Briggs representing um, the Airport Commission tomorrow. Um, we had a conversation last uh, or last week at the um, Committee of the Whole meeting about having a conversation about the state of the city. And with what's going on with the police department, I truly believe now is a really good time to have that yeah. and get that discussion out into the community. I have spoke with the city administrator and, uh, and Michaela and we are going to do that on March 8th. It is going to be uh, pre-recorded. We are going to make sure that it is out on all social me media. It is out to the, uh, the radio station, to the, uh, the newspaper, to KCC-TV. Um, along with our social medias uh, to get that information out. We want to make sure that the information is accurate. <laughs> we want to make sure that the information is, uh, is the, the position of the city and what we're doing because we are doing some really good things right now. So we are going to have it pre-recorded. Um, there will be some more information coming uh, at our next city council meeting, but it will be on... Uh, on March 8th at 6 p.m. So, uh, one thing I should see in is I am also now on the board of Kutaska, just so everybody knows that. Since I'm you've there. retired, you've gotten on like dang near every board. I know I, I, I filled all the application for one today. I, I think that's enough. I don't, <laughs> I think we'll just save this. We'll wait them to come to me. This you can time. thank me for that. They asked me to do it. I said, talk to Pete. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, they caught me at a good time too, seven o'clock on a Thursday. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the last thing that I, I want to say, and this is going to be really short. I love the civility of our city council and working with our department heads. We've went through some tough stuff already. We have more tough stuff in the future and we don't always have to agree. We just all have to understand that everyone's position on this board is about trying to bring us to a better community in the future. And as long as we all move forward with that as, a, as our guiding post, we're gonna do just great. Go to audience. Do we have anyone in audience that wants to bring anything forward? Hearing none. Uh, correspondence. We have the International Falls Public Library Board of Trustees on uh, meeting information on February 8th. 
the International Falls Sump Pump Inspection Report submitted by Bolton and Mink. Riveting. It, it really was. Not not like some of those uh, those sewer yeah. videos. Yeah. Um, and the Kuching County Draft Board of Commissioner minutes. Our next regular city council meeting is going to be Monday, March 6th, 2023 at 530. This meeting is adjourned.